Welcome to this next SCBA reflection. It's great to have you and we really hope that you've enjoyed and benefited and uh, you found these, these little reflections helpful over the last four months. I thought I might bring you down here to the coastline because we're, entered in, we're entering into the holiday season and many of you may have already taken a break or may be thinking about taking a break in the next few weeks. So I thought I might do just a short reflection about the importance of stopping, the importance of resting, the importance of being restored in our strengths and the importance of being re-envisioned for the future. I think for many of us, we've found these four months really difficult. In fact, one of the common themes when we speak to ministers, church leaders, pioneers, chaplains, that people are feeling pretty exhausted and very tired. We may feel surprised by that because actually most of us have been indoors most of the time. Uh, we may do a bit of physical exercise, but actually on the whole, we've been sitting around working from home. But I read recently that actually video conferencing particularly is really exhausting and it takes three times as much mental energy to have a conversation on video than to see someone face to face. And therefore we shouldn't be surprised that we're feeling pretty jaded and pretty tired. So there are times, opportunities, when it's absolutely essential that we stop and take a break. The writer of Genesis in chapter two, verse two, having recorded that God created the world in six days, goes on to say that on the seventh day, God rested. If you take some time to look into the literal meaning of that word rest, we discover actually it means to stop, to cease. Having created and worked for six days, God stopped. He ceased his work. And later in the Ten Commandments, we discover that God encourages the people to have a day of rest, the Sabbath. Keep the Sabbath day holy. We never find the word holiday written in Scripture, not in the sense that we understand it today and the way that we take our holidays. But you do find the celebrations and the festivals that are a place within the calendar, the Jewish calendar. God encourages the people of Israel to have moments where they stop, periods of time where they stop. The norm is put to one side and they stop and particularly focus on him, of course. But we need those moments when we are still. We need those moments when we stop. We need those moments when we rest. We need those moments when God restores us and gives us new strengths. And we need those moments when God re-envisions us. I really identify with the character of Elijah, particularly in 1 Kings chapter 19. He's had that great victory on Mount Carmel, but then he gets that news that Jezebel wants to kill him. And therefore he just runs and he runs for the hills. Have you ever been in that situation where you've been in that intense moment of ministry and at the end of it, all you want to do is just run for the hills, run for the mountains. But in chapter 19, we discover that God does several things for Elijah. And I think God can do these things for us too. And the first thing he does is he gives him rest. He sleeps, he sleeps under the bush. He wants to die, but he sleeps. He sleeps a couple of times actually, and we need sleep. We need sleep. Stop and sleep. He then is woken by an angel who feeds him, who, who has burning coals ready and water and bread available to him and encourages him and says, come Elijah, come and eat and drink. He then sleeps again and then he's woken again and the angel again says to him, Elijah, eat and drink for the journey is long. Our journey in ministry is long. There's a long journey ahead of us and so it's essential that we stop so that we're ready for the longer journey. And then of course he arrives in Mount Horeb where he meets with God 
And God, what God does is he redirects his perspective where he helps him to understand what God's perspective is. Elijah arrives saying, I'm the only one left. There's no, no more. No one else is left. And God gently through the whisper, the silence, the stillness, refreshes his perspective to see that he isn't the only one. In fact, there are 7,000 that have not knelt before Baal and who are righteous and faithful before Yahweh. We, we need that journey. We need that rest. We need God to feed us. And we need God to redirect our perspectives. So often our perspectives are incorrect. And it's not until we stop. In whatever we do in the stopping, it enables God to refresh us, refresh our perspectives, so that we might know what the future is. It is absolutely essential that each and every one of us stops. If God stops, why would we not stop? If God sets down commands for Sabbath day rest, why would we not rest? If God wants to come and feed us, why would we not receive from him? I've discovered in those moments of holidaying that God has done a huge work in my life just by me just being still, not looking for it, not expecting for it, not searching for it, not being proactive about it, just receiving it as God gives it. Recently, I, I spoke to a minister who, who said to me or asked me the question, should I cancel my holiday? Because there's so much going on, you know, church is beginning to get back together again. And my resounding answer to that was no. We need to stop from time to time. We need to stop for the sake of ourselves. We need to stop for the sake of our families. We need to stop for the sake of our friends and, and those around us. And we need to stop for the sake of our ministry and our churches. So whatever you do, please, if you have the opportunity somewhere to take a break, to take a holiday, a week or two, Please do, and may God bless you in that moment.